Hello everyone, happy Wednesday. It's been a minute since I've been in the group to do a live and there's been a lot going on in um, behind the scenes. I have been really busy supporting our clients inside the Love and Trust Your Guts program. Um, we've had a lot of exciting changes going on over there and enjoying summer. And I wanted to come in here and chat because I saw a question, a great question in the group and there was a conversation going on around it. And so I wanted to kind of chime in and some people were wondering what my thoughts were. Um, before we jump in, I wanted to uh, just let you guys know that we have we had taken a bit of a break from our YouTube channel, but we're back at it. We uh, had a couple of people asking, where'd you go? Where are the videos? When are they coming back? And the great news is we have uh, videos happening weekly. Um, so make sure you guys jump over to our YouTube channel, Alyssa Labrack. Uh, dash gut expert and you'll find lots of really great content happening over there we'll always share it in the group but you know Facebook and all the algorithms and stuff don't love sharing our content so if you don't see it it is there um, you just have to go over there and check it out um, so today I want to talk to you about lectin free diet and someone in the group was sharing how they were following a lectin free diet and this was you know crucial for gut health and it made such a big difference for them and there was a great conversation happening in the comments around uh, is this something that they need to do and what does that look like and what steps they need to take and I think that I actually started typing a response I was like let's just let's just jump on video so the thing that I want you guys to check in on is when you're making decisions as to what you're going to do to fix your gut or support your gut is asking yourself, does this support the goal that I'm wanting to achieve? Now, a lot of people, when you're kind of desperate to feel better, we get this narrow um, kind of like tunnel vision of I just want to stop the gas, bloat, diarrhea, constipation, acid reflux, abdominal pain, whatever it is you're struggling with. I just want that thing to go away. But this is actually coming from a fear and scarcity mindset. It's not coming from an abundance mindset. It's not coming from cultivating or curating the type of life that you want to live. And truly, I think if we strip it back, if the whole purpose of this is for you to feel normal again and to be able to be present with your children and not snap at them or your spouse or be able to advance in your career and not have to work worry about your gut making it difficult for you to show up for work or go out to lunch with a client. Um, that's the real reason why you're wanting to do this. You know, like the, if the constipation, for example, if you could just not poop ever again for the rest of your life and it didn't make you feel shitty, then you'd be happy to not poop ever again. So it's not really the constipation that you want to go, want to go away. It's what the constipation is doing to your life right? I want you to look at what these symptoms are doing to your life. In fact, um, this, this week, my husband and I on Saturday, we are, I live in Ontario, Canada, we're driving across country to British Columbia. And we're going to be away for a couple of weeks. And I'm going to be vlogging some of that journey and sharing with you guys some of the staples and things that I'm going to be packing with me while we're on the road. So it's going to take us four days to drive there, four days back. We're going to be hauling ass 13 hour days in the car. And then we're going to land in hotels, which are hot spots for um, gut infections and flares. And I'll explain why in the video. And so <clears throat> I've been chatting with a lot of you guys in the group this week and so far, 68% of you have shared that your gut issues are preventing you from traveling. So this is, this is exactly what I mean is like your, your gut issues aren't the real thing we're chasing after resolution. Like, yes, we want to fix that, but it's really because you want to be able to go live your life. You want to be able to travel right? You want to, again, eat the foods that the rest of your family are eating. So when you're making decisions around, should I follow a lectin-free diet? Should I follow a low FODMAP diet, a GAPS diet, a whatever diet? I want you to ask yourself, does this support how I want to feel? 
All right, so if we're going lectin free in this case, are you gonna be able to eat the foods that the rest of your family is eating? If you go to Thanksgiving dinner and your sister-in-law or your mother-in-law or your brother-in-law or whoever it is, your friends are hosting dinner and they put in front of you a meal with lectin foods, beans for example, and they weren't properly soaked or they put a plate of brown rice in front of you and it wasn't properly soaked, are you going to be okay with sitting there feeling restricted? Are you going to be okay with having to live on a restrictive diet the rest of your life? Is that how you wanted to feel? In my experience, no one's ever come to me and been like, yep, I don't want to be able to eat the same foods as my family. I don't want to be able to go to restaurants. I'm happy living isolated at home. I'm happy being cranky. I'm happy still having these gut symptoms um, because removing these foods didn't actually fix the issue. It temporarily kind of pulls back the symptoms, but the second that I get re-exposed to these foods, all my symptoms come rushing back. I'm totally cool with that. No one has ever said this to me, <laughs> right? So. I'm starting with this, guys, because so many people get chasing after these diets and they get really excited about them because they're looking for, they're chasing the fear, they're, they're, they're chasing because of the fear. I want to get out of this symptom. But is that what you really want or is it you want to be able to go do the thing? Do you see the difference here? Those that get stuck on the, the symptom and the pain have a really hard time fully fixing their gut. Our clients in the Love and Trust Your Guts program who shift their focus into how do I want to feel and we align their protocol and their foods and their choices with how they want to feel, have full resolution of their gut issues. Okay, so let's, let's get a little bit more nitty gritty here because we're going to start talking about like what does the lectin diet do versus don't do and, and this really, this applies to all diets out there. Um, the the idea of removing food from your life to resolve gut issues, I'm gonna come unfiltered here because I really just want you guys to understand this so you get out of this cycle. Is It's just absolutely asinine, it just doesn't make sense, right? The premise of it is that food is the problem. And the reality is food isn't your problem, <laughs> right? Food isn't your problem. The problem is you likely have an underactive stomach or low stomach acid, which means every time you eat foods, those foods are not being broken down properly. So they end up rotting and fermenting in your gut. And this creates things like acid reflux and gas and bloating and constipation among many other symptoms, right? So is it the food or is it that your stomach is struggling to break down those foods? So then there's the other side of this is that oftentimes people are living in chronic stress and a lot of people are like, oh, I don't feel stressed. Well, it's not just emotionally whether you feel stressed or not. Are there any toxins in your environment? Is there mold in your home? Do you have hidden oral infections going on? Um, my, I have family members who've been on protocol. One of them is, um, uh, he does scrap metal on the side. Like every day he is being exposed to metal and he works in a factory. So heavy metals, a, a huge toxin exposure every single day, right? So there's, there's all of these factors that are stressing out the body. So is it that your body is reacting to a food or is it even reacting to the chemicals that are on that food like glyphosate. Did you know that rice, for example, you know, brown rice, this is a food that would be a no-no because it's uh, because of the lectins in it, but is rice the issue or is it the uh, lead that's commonly found in rice? You see, we're chasing after the wrong things here. And so when we really start stripping it back and we look at toxins just as a whole, for example, and what toxins really do to our body, well, toxins weaken the immune system, they totally mess up our microbiome, um, and they create stress for the body. 
right? So when stress occurs, now your stomach acid is not being produced. Your body is going to be staying in this fight or flight state. And even if we just look at the environment that we've been living in over the last two years, we have been living under chronic stress and fear for over two years now. And there are many people that are living in survival mode. And so you may be thinking day to day you're not feeling stressed, but I almost guarantee your body is feeling stressed from the last two years alone. Right? So this stress, again, means that every time you go to eat, your body is not in rest and digest. It's in fight or flight. So if you had a bear chasing after you, your body's not going to be like, let's just prepare the digestive enzymes to break down the steak that we're about to eat. No, 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 no. Your body's going to be like, we need to shut down the gut. We need to send all of the energy to arms and legs to run away from that bear. And that's the problem with fight or flight is that your, your digestive system is shut down. And many of you guys are eating while you're working or eating after a busy day or just generally feeling stressed. Your body is stuck in fight or flight, this chronic um, stress feedback loop. And then you go to eat and your body can't break these foods down because your body is not in rest and digest. So again, is it the food or is it that your body's stuck in a chronic stress cycle? So you can see here, guys, as we start to continue to unpack this, the premise of food being the problem, it just doesn't make sense. And what often happens is if you follow a restrictive diet, you can take foods out temporarily. You may see short-term relief, right? Uh, but the symptoms do come back because the underlying issues of toxins or stress or an underactive stomach, we haven't even talked about infections or the immune system, immune response to food, infections reacting to foods. None of those things have been addressed. So it's really always a huge red flag for me when I see practitioners and doctors online promoting this like these diets or these you know one-off supplements that are just going to fix all the things this person was sharing about these energy bits like guys this isn't going to fix your gut this is part of what's perpetuating the pain for you and keeping you stuck on this angry bus train bus train this angry train angry gut train right you're you're like stuck on this cycle of trying to figure out how to fix your gut and all of the excitement that comes with the marketing and promotion. And then when we're feeling desperate, it's really, they're preying on our desperation. Um, you know, we get excited. We're like, oh my God, I'm gonna try this thing. And then you try the thing and it's like, oh my God, it works for a little bit. And, and we become these huge fans, but it's not actually supporting how we wanted to feel in the first place. Right, so we gotta go back to, you know, ultimately my job as a practitioner is to help you guys understand and find the underlying hidden healing opportunities. In my experience, these go down into root causes of toxins and chronic and uh, chronic and unresolved stress and trauma um, and infections in the body, like we have to address on this level, right? But, uh, in terms of diet, I want to give you guys uh, some tidbits here so that we can simplify the food, all right? And it's this is something that I will continue beating this drum till I'm dead <laughs> because I got caught in this cycle. And what we see for clients coming into our Love and Trust Your Guts program is that they're very much the type of people who have been caught in this cycle before too. Most of our clients have been to multiple doctors, multiple practitioners they've been on multiple different diets and now we're not only having to resolve the underlying toxins stress and trauma and infections that were there to begin with that were causing this initially but now we're having to address the added stress and trauma of food fears and disordered relationship with their food and their bodies and also these untrue stories that they've developed like maybe it's not possible for me to heal maybe I'm gonna have to live with this the rest of my life or even like not really believing that it's possible for full resolution so it's like if it could just get a little bit better that would be great right we start to settle and we totally lose ourselves and we lose our dream muscle 
And so this is why I'm so passionate about getting you guys to understand that these, you know, marketing, you know, dangling of the carrot, just try these things and getting you this quick short term um, relief is very different than long term resolution and also creating a lifestyle that's truly supportive of how you want to feel and again long term health. Before I dive into some tidbits of like what you do want to be doing with food, I just want to leave you guys with this. We should be scared of like fast foods. We should be scared of processed foods. We should be scared of things like beyond meat and these like meat alternatives and this agenda that's happening to push meat alternatives and now to begin starting to demonize meat. Just watch that dialogue that's occurring and let's call bullshit on that now, okay? Processed, um, chemical filled, toxin filled, sprayed pesticide, herbicide sprayed foods. These are the foods we need to be worried about. Whenever I see someone online, again, doctors, practitioners, who are fear-mongering whole healthy foods, that is a huge red flag. And I want you guys to be able to smell that shit a mile away so that you don't fall for the trap, okay? If we're demonizing garlic and onions, we need to run. If we are demonizing, you know, vegetables or broccoli, like there's so many diets out there. Carnivore, it's like, you know, meat's the be all end all. And, you know, keto fat's the be all end all. And low FODMAP is, oh my God, we got to have the low FODMAP foods. And, and lectins, we got to avoid the lectins. And like, we get lost in all this noise. And it, honestly, guys, the marketing tactic, it's meant to confuse you so that you are disarmed and disempowered so that you feel like you need support. And I'm just not here for that. I'm, I, don't, I don't tolerate that bullshit online, okay? And I don't want you guys to either. So can we just talk about how we simplify food? I'm gonna tell you exactly what we teach our clients in the Love and Trust Your Guts program because food is the easiest part. Food's the easiest part. We get that in and out of the way right at the beginning. Okay, the real work comes from, again, addressing underlying causes. So here's what you need to be focusing on. We teach nutrition pairing. Okay, nutrition pairing is all about getting healthy whole foods in balance altogether. No foods devil, right? No bad foods. Only yes or no foods. Is this a yes for me or a no for me as an individual? So there's no, you know, blanket one diet fits all. That's insane. It's insane, guys. Uh, it's just insane. Um, so food pairing, we get all of the foods together. So what, I want you guys to grab a pen and you guys gotta write this down because we don't have a, a download for this. I'm doing this off, off the hook here. So grab a pen and paper, you need four food categories. Protein, you need fat, you need carbs, and you need vegetables. And I'm gonna say fruits are in there too. We like to kind of rotate fruits in and I'll talk about fruits in a second. But every, every single meal, you need to have a protein, you need to have a fat, you need to have a carbohydrate, and you need to have a vegetable or a fruit. Okay, so what does that look like? Keep writing this down, proteins. Protein is gonna be your meats, right? It's like your, your chicken, your beef, uh, your turkey, if you eat pork, you can have pork, uh, fish, eggs, um, protein powders in moderation, and just, you know, little tidbit in here on protein powders is a lot of protein powders are laden with things like heavy metals, so making sure you're getting really good quality, um, gelatin powders, collagen, and I'll, again, also just add, we don't want you eating your protein in powders all the time, but they're a great substitute when you're in a pinch or when you're having an off tummy day, Okay. But these are all examples of proteins. And I'll even add in here that uh, beans and things like hemp hearts are great plant-based um, protein options, but they really do not compare to animal protein, okay? 
that's a whole other talk. And I have no nothing against being plant-based. I was plant-based for many years myself. Um, but again, that's a whole other talk on uh, proteins and your gut. But that's the protein category, okay? The next category is fats. So fats are gonna be your nuts, your seeds, your olive oils, your avocado oil, your butter, uh, dressings. So typically dressings will fall under um, the fat category because they're usually mixed with some sort of oil. I think I said avocados, but if I didn't, I'll say that one again. Um, these are all of your fats. Okay, oh, I'll add flax seeds, chia seeds, great fibers for supporting your poops, all right? Okay, next up is uh, carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are going to be, and I'm gonna put these in two different categories. So we've got our really healthy, I'm gonna say natural carbohydrates, and then we've got more processed, refined carbohydrates. So carbohydrates like sweet potatoes, white potatoes, white rice, brown rice, um, you could even start to get into the squashes of the world. Eggplants kind of can fall between vegetables or carbohydrates. Um, corn can fall under this category, although a little bit tougher to digest. A good quality organic corn, nothing wrong with that. Um, and then we, again, more processed carbohydrates are going to be like your pastas and your crackers of the world. And these are where I would encourage you to find either organic, really good quality sprouted breads or another category or food in this category and or gluten-free. And what which category you fall in really depends on the person um, in terms of what underlying infections are going on. So for example, when we have a client who has candida uh, overgrowth in their body it's usually because there's mold in their home one of the larger root causes and if someone has mold in their home they're going to be highly sensitive to gluten and this is an example of when we would really encourage someone to be gluten free okay so those are carbohydrates next up is going to be your vegetables and vegetables are well vegetables <laughs> anything that falls under that category now, so every time you sit down and you have a meal, I want you to go through this checklist that you've hopefully just written down here, and you wanna pull a food out of each category. The time where we like to change this up a little bit is like breakfast, for example. Let's say you wanted to do a smoothie. You could do your protein powder for your protein. Um, you can do your ground flax seed for your fat. Instead of doing a carbohydrate, you're probably not gonna put like a, a slice of bread or crackers into your smoothie. So you can make that a fruit. So put some like strawberries and then your vegetable could be your spinach. So you see how we can swap out your carbohydrate for a fruit at breakfast, for example. Um, Another example is let's say you wanna do oatmeal, like a, an oatmeal parfait or something for breakfast. So your protein could be like two hard boiled eggs on the side or even two eggs kind of scrambled into and cooked into your oats, which would be your carbohydrate. You could still do ground flax seed or even some almond butter drizzled on top. And then instead of doing like spinach in your oatmeal, you would do some sort of fruit. So you see how we can rotate your fruits in with either uh, swap it out for your veg or your carbohydrate depending on the meal you're having but this is how you create really balanced meals now in, inside the love and trust your guts program we further customize things based on your height weight age and activity level and uh, later in the program as you're working on nutrition pairing we get really dialed in with portions um, because I also find sometimes we'll have clients that are eating a balanced meal, but they're overeating a particular category. So I had a client when she was eating three slices of toast and was wondering why she's getting so bloated. Well, three slices of toast is a little too much. And so we just dialed back the portion and balanced out the other categories and her bloating really um, decreased. So this is how you guys want to approach food. The beautiful part about using this checklist is it's customized to your individual body because there's no use in me telling you that you must eat tuna or you must eat Brussels sprouts if you don't like these foods, right? If there's a food that you're struggling with, let's say every time you eat brown rice, you get really bloated. Well, one, uh, switching to organic was the game changer for me. I can eat brown rice when I eat organic brown rice because there's less toxins being sprayed and on that food, 
okay? But let's say you even do the organic or even sprouted or soaked version and it's still just creating a bit of bloating. Know that the rice is not the issue. It's likely that the stomach acid levels are not there or there's an infection like SIBO that's reacting to the fibers uh, or the greens that in that particular food. So temporarily pausing that food Key, key piece here while also going and addressing the root causes is the way that we fully resolve this. And what we find is that temporarily swapping out a food may only be for a few weeks to a month while we're working on hitting that infection or resolving that deficiency. And this is a really important second piece that we're finding most people aren't doing, right? They're just taking out the foods, but not getting to the fixing the gut part. So I hope this has been really helpful for you guys in unpacking not just lectin-free diet, but all diets, how we approach food in general. So to answer the question, do you need to follow a lectin-free diet for gut health? The answer is actually heck no. The answer is we need to address the underlying issues happening in your gut. And the role that food plays is not out of punishment. It's not out of restriction. It's, it's not, you know, out of like resentment to your body for like not digesting properly or not, you know, performing properly for you. Food is meant to nourish you. Food is going to be the fuel that you put in your body to allow the body to be energized, to do the work to heal. You see, it's like going on a road trip without putting gas in your gas tank. Food is going to be the gas in your gas tank while you take this road trip to fixing your gut. And the more we keep getting into these restrictive mindsets, these restrictive diets, and we take out food, and we take out food, and we take out food, all you're doing is starving your microbiome, you're causing damage to the microbiome, you're increasing your risk of infection, you're increasing your risk of food fear and disordered relationship with your food and your body. And we're really not getting to how you wanted to feel, which was to feel normal again. So if this was helpful for you, give me a thumbs up in the comments and we'll see you guys real soon. I'm going to start popping in here and doing a few more of these lives, but also again, be sure to jump over to our YouTube channel. Um, We've got live videos going out every Thursday and I have one coming up on low FODMAP diet in the coming weeks. So um, give me all the thumbs up in the comments if you're like, hell yes, we are over these restrictive diets. No longer am I going to follow these restrictive diets and we'll see you guys real soon. All right, bye.